This is one of the last outdoor activities here in Colorado where people can still follow those social distancing guidelines. It feels a lot colder now than it did just 15 minutes ago, but this is a good illustration of the shift that we're seeing here. You see that sideways snow? It's coming right into the lens. Scary situation for him, Laura. That was very scary. The nine year old was just out in the yard playing with friends, and I'm told that is very common here in this neighborhood. As you see right here, a lot of plow trucks are on the road, which is great. They're acting as an escort to the traffic. So you'll see a lot of traffic coming westbound, whereas eastbound, it's stalled right now. So in this hour, we wanted to show you more of the accumulation as I step into this fresh snow. We're getting into the calf territory now. They were actually picking up 250 pounds of dog poop each week. And when the city heard that, they knew it was time to make some changes. As the traffic situation improved out there, I still see police tape up behind you and, and energy crews, Excel Energy behind you too. Yeah, Excel is responding to that power box that the car took out. Uh, traffic wise, yes, there are two lanes open, so that's better than trying to divert traffic all the way back to Colfax. But like I said, you, you go uh, between Stout and Champa, and they're having to go from four to two lanes very quickly. The city will tell you the answer, or at least the start of all this, is duct tape. Yeah, duct tape. That was how they got everything constructed today for this mock up right along Santa Fe. If you're coming out here in the next hour or so, don't wear black. It's really Really nice out here, really hot. Once you're down inside one of these tree wells and knocking snow on top of you, you end up burying yourself. And from that point, there's really no escape. Don't move, don't, don't move. Colorado, the number two deadliest state for tree well and deep snow immersion. Oh, the snow just it's all around your face. It's hard to breathe. Dale Atkins has been with the Alpine Rescue Team for over 45 years. He tells the problem solvers tree wells are most dangerous during and after big storms when the branches keep the snow from falling at the base of the trunk and compacting, creating a sort of winter quicksand. Yeah, two, three. The snow is loose and sugar-like. Right now, snowpack isn't very deep, but Atkins says that's likely to drastically change in the next couple months. So our tree wells that today are just beginning, they're gonna become cavernous. We're gonna need help to dig them out. You can suffocate within a, a minute or three minutes. Since 2001, there have been 13 tree well and deep snow immersion deaths at Colorado ski resorts. Fatalities at skiers are rare. But when they do happen, it's still pretty shocking to people. It hits us every single day. Austin Salviano's brother, Logan, died in a tree well on Vail Mountain back in 2016. Those tree wells are so deep and they're so hidden that you could ski right by it and not even know. Statistics show that nine out of 10 skilled skiers who go into a tree well head first can't get out on their own. And those first few seconds are crucial. You need to get the snow away from your face. Push it away from your face. And then gently start packing the snow around you to give it some strength. Even with more breathing room, the rescue effort needs to happen immediately. We don't want to dig straight down on top of them. We want to start digging from the side and work our way in. But we've got to do this quickly. The best thing to do is to educate people. And unfortunately, uh, we learned too late. Since his brother's death, Salviano now works to spread awareness about tree wells. If you could save one life, isn't it worth it? And it's not enough to ski with a buddy in the trees. You should be within a few turns of another because otherwise they won't be able to hear you yelling or see where you're at. Now, if you go into a tree well, there are different types of safety equipment that you can take in advance. That includes whistles that clip right onto your collar that you can blow once you're down into that tree well. For more information, just head over to our Fox 31 app. Laura Wilson, Fox 31. And today, a 19-month-old child with a rare disease now needs a treatment that costs $2 million. Now, tonight they're reaching out to the Fox 31 problem solvers and Laura Wilson, who shows us why this price tag is so, so high. Laura? Well, little Maisie has the most severe type of spinal muscular atrophy. In fact, her mother says 95% of children with type 1 SMA 
don't make it to age two. Maisie, as you heard, is already 19 months, so her family is turning to the public for help and raising enough money to pay for a life-saving treatment. Taking care of 19-month-old Maisie is a full-time job. She can't be left alone ever um, because in a second she can choke on just her own secretions. That sound you hear is her vent. And throughout the interview, we witness just a small portion of their daily routine. Maisie was diagnosed with type 1 spinal muscular atrophy last June. Pretty horrible, gruesome stuff. There's an FDA-approved treatment called Zolgensma that not only stops the disease from progressing, but can reverse the symptoms over time. This is my baby, and I want to give her the best chance at life. I can't do that because I don't have $2.2 million. That's about how much it would cost out of pocket for the one-time life-saving dose. There's not a million kids that have this disease. There's like 250 in order to continue to fund um, their research. They need to charge a high amount and state Medicaid won't cover any of it. They denied Maisie because she's responded to Spinraza and then um, they denied her because they don't have clinical data that supports over the age of 5.9 months. Spinraza is another FDA treatment that Green says only slows the progression of the disease. In May, I watched five of my friends bury their babies all on Spinraza. So she's making a desperate plea to the community to help raise the money before it's too late. Please, this is my baby. The Grand Junction mother still holding out hope her baby will live to see her second birthday. I can find two dollars in the bottom of my purse. <laughs> Um, in my car. If we could get a million people to find those two dollars, we could do this. And a GoFundMe page has been set up for Maisie. So far, they've raised about $60,000. Live in the newsroom, Laura Wilson, Fox 31. It was the experience of a lifetime for hundreds of young football players who got to play alongside one of their Bronco idols for the last two days. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Emmanuel Sanders hosting his fourth annual football pro camp. Channel 2's Laura Wilson was at the final day of camp this morning and takes us inside this fun fuel day, new at 7. Here's what's great about this camp. Sanders teams up with a nonprofit called A Precious Child, and through their Give Sports program, they were able to send 200 kids in need to camp this year free of charge. And added bonus, Philip Lindsay even stopped in today. <laughs> Carl Martin can't wait to tell his friends what he did this summer. Yeah! I'm just going to say, I met Philip Lindsay, I met a New York Giants player, and Emmanuel Sanders and just tell them the whole story and just feel good by myself. Carl was one of about 200 kids who got to go to Emmanuel Sanders football camp for free. Ready, go single right here. And says he's never felt more excited. I didn't eat sugar, but it was like I ate sugar. <laughs> to be able to, you know, give back, um, you know, that's everything, especially where I come from. I, already, I always said once I got to a certain place uh, in, a, in the NFL, I would create my foundation. I would start throwing football camps. Which in turn has created an opportunity for families to send their kids to a camp they couldn't otherwise afford. So beautiful, so beautiful. I, 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 oh, I'm so excited for them. The two-day camp teaching kids a special set of skills. I learned a lot about catching and just not giving up and trying hard and keep on, just keep on going. On three. When you lose, it's not the end of the road. Three, Sanders. And one more thing. Oh yeah. Confident. It's the key. Do again. Lots yeah. of confidence. You feel like you could give Joe Flacco a run for his money? Oh, yeah. What's that? A <laughs> minor. Say hi. The 10 year old QB has number 10 to thank for that. Yesterday, once I shook um, Mayo Sanders hands, there was electricity that went through my hand. So I got his powers to be great. And several of those kids who I spoke with today said they have no immediate plans to wash the hand that touched Emmanuel Sanders.